What's going on, y'all? We're going to do factoring day two. Today we're factoring trinomials, so let's go ahead and get to it. Now, y'all might have factored uh, a lot of trinomials in the past um, in Algebra 1 or in like middle school and stuff, but um, the way that I'm going to teach you is going to be a bit different, maybe, than the way that people have taught you in the past. Um, you're not required to do it the way I teach you, but this is uh, it's the only way I'm going to teach you because yeah, but if you have a way that works for you, um, by all means, go ahead and do that way. If it works every time for you, uh, but if you're getting stuff wrong, then uh, yeah, you're going to want to change. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so this is factor, so your answer should look like two factors, something like this, or more than two factors. Um, it, should not, it should not look like this. So this is, this is bad. Uh, you want it to look like this. All right, <clears throat> so... Um, let's go ahead and do this question. Um, so step one, always check for GCF. So right now we have a, we, we can take out a two, so let's go ahead and do that. So two parentheses z squared minus uh, 6z divided by two is 3z. And then uh, negative 20 divided by two is negative 10. So now uh, after this, you're going to multiply a times c. So a is one and c is negative 10. And we're going to write that over to the side and make a little t-chart. So three, step three, after this, you're going to find, you need to find two numbers that multiply to a times c. So in this case, negative 10. Um, and then adds to b. So b in this case is negative 3. Um, so yeah, let's go down the list. So first we have uh, 10 and negative 1. Uh, that doesn't work. So negative 10 and 1. That doesn't work. That's negative nine. Uh, let's and then after that we can do five and negative two. That adds to positive three, so that doesn't work. And then negative five and two, so that adds to negative three. So this works. Now the next step is you are going to uh, you're going to rewrite the b term uh, it, as as these numbers. What do you get from step three? So check it out. So this is going to be two parentheses z squared, and then instead of b, so instead of uh, 3z, negative 3z, we're going to write negative 5z plus 2z minus 10. So this, how we did step 2 and 3, we did that to, to pick which numbers uh, we're going to rewrite b as. Okay, so now the last step is we're going to do our grouping step, and this looks like uh, G, the GCF of the first pair. of terms and then the second pair. So what does that look like? Let me show you. So the first pair of terms, they have a z in common. So I'm gonna take out a z. So z parentheses z minus five. And then the second pair, they have a two in common. So this is two parentheses z minus five. And now uh, this is still part of the grouping step. We're gonna take z here and two, and we're gonna make that one term z plus 2, and then we're going to make this other term uh, z minus 5. So this is my answer. Alright, so let's go ahead and do another example. I'm not going to rewrite these steps again, but I will verbalize them. Alright, so here we have another one. So let's go ahead and factor out uh, as much as we can. So uh, we have a GCF right now of x squared. So we can take out x squared and we'll have 2x squared minus x uh, minus 6. So now uh, let's go ahead and find out what to do. So next we're going to multiply a times c. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Make a t-chart. We need to find two numbers that multiply to this that add to negative 1. So let's go down the list. Uh, negative 12 and 1, nope. Uh, 12 and negative 1, nope. Uh, negative 6 and 2, nope. So 6 and 2, that's a nope. And we're going to keep going. So negative 4 and, sorry, it's negative 2. Negative 4 and 3, oh, that does work. So here are the two numbers that do work. So we're going to rewrite x as those two numbers. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have x squared and then 2x squared minus 4x plus 3x. So notice how I rewrite negative x as the two numbers I've chosen, and then minus 6. 
So now I'm going to do my grouping step. So I'm going to GCF the first two. So 2x parentheses uh, x minus 2 and then GCF the second pair. So plus 3 then x minus 2. So now my two terms are x 2x plus 3. So 2x here and then 3 here and then times x minus 2. So there is my solution. All right, we got another example, and this is definitely the spiciest example. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so you might be like, what the heck? This is so many letters and not a lot of numbers. But uh, let's just do what we know and see what happens. All right. Um, all right, so first thing is GCF. Okay, so we're going to GCF. We have an A squared in common. So let's write A squared over to the side and see what we have left. We have a squared b squared and then we have minus 4 uh, ab plus 3. Okay so those of you that are keen uh, you might have seen that if a b let's say that's just one variable if this is say x then we could rewrite this as something like uh, a squared and then x squared because a b uh, think about this a b squared you know that's going to be equal to x squared and this is a squared b squared so I can say that a squared b squared is x squared minus 4x plus 3 so pretty crazy right so this is actually a trinomial that we can factor um, so let's go ahead and do it so a is 1 and c is 3. So that's going to be 1 times 3 is 3. Now I need to find two numbers that add to negative 4. So 1 and 3 doesn't work, but negative 1 and negative 3 works. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. a squared, then a squared, uh, b squared, and then minus uh, ab plus, or sorry, not plus, minus 3ab plus 3. So I'm rewriting my b term as uh, as the two things we found. And now we're going to GCF the first one. So I can take out an ab here. I'm left with ab minus 1. I can take out a negative 3 here. So negative 3. And this will be ab. And then I take out a negative from the positive 3. A negative 3 from the positive 3. You get negative 1. And now we can do our grouping step. So ab minus 3 times a b minus 1. So here is my lovely answer. Alright, I know this video is getting long, but we have one more example. It's going to be a solving example. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so this might also look intimidating to you, and I do that on purpose so that you can learn. Um, the first thing you want to do with solving stuff like this is get rid of the fractions. Because we have an equal sign, we can do stuff to both sides. Um, whenever we have um, whenever we have just an expression, uh, we can't really do that. But here it's really nice. We can get rid of all the fractions. So if I multiply both sides by 4, then I can get rid of all these fractions because uh, I just multiplied by the uh, least common denominator. So I'll have, let's see, 4 times 1 fourth, that's just 1, so this will be x squared. 4 times 1 half, that would be 2, so I'm going to get 2x. 4 times uh, 3 fourths, that's going to be negative 3. And it's going to be equal to 0 times 4, which is 0. So now I just have a normal factoring question, and I have to solve this. So a times c is negative 3. And I need to find two numbers that add to that, and or add to negative 2, multiply to negative 3. So negative 3 and 1. Well, first try that worked so let's go ahead and rewrite negative 2 so x squared minus 3x plus 1x so that's just going to be x and then this is minus 3 and then equals 0 so it's GCF uh, let's take out an x and so then we have x minus 3 here and then we're actually going to have a plus 1 times x minus 3 here equals 0 so now I have x plus 1 times x minus 3 so x and then 1 and then x minus 3 goes here. And now I have to set each one of these factors equal to 0 to solve. So x plus 1 equals 0. So x is equal to negative 1. And then x minus 3 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 3. 
All right, it's getting 10 minutes, uh, so this is going to be the end of the video, and I will see you next time.